Hello pandas. We've covered the common metals, so now it's time to talk about something a little more fancy. Scrap silver. Some keep bringing it up in the comments, and I can't blame you. It's a precious and beautiful metal that is not that hard to find for free, if you know where to look. So let's hammer it out. Where to find it, how to identify it, and what to do with it. Can we just marvel about silver for a moment? It's really special. It's got a low enough melting temperature that it can be formed in all kinds of ways, but it's still pretty tough, even at really high purities. It has excellent corrosion resistance and is the most thermally and electrically conductive metal. The only reason we use copper in anything is to save money and gold when maximum corrosion resistance is the target. Silver will oxidize or tarnish and the surface will become less conductive, interfering with high frequency stuff like data transfer and audio video signals. But if you've got a vampire or werewolf problem, Silver's got you. Point is, it's really cool and sort of valuable, which is why you'll only find it in really small bits. But if you aren't trying to spend your time making money, you can build up a collection of these small pieces and they do add up. So let's talk about where. Now we're here for the scrappers, so obviously you can find old coins and jewelry and spoons and those sorts of things which are silver, and while I do think I can help identify those, that's not where we're going to focus. Scrap silver will be in high conductivity places, so things like uh, connectors and the ends of ribbon cables can be silver plated if they're not gold. Keyboards like this one have a silver mylar inside. A lot of the brushes and starter motors will be silver graphite or have silver armatures in them as well. I've read that plasma screens have a layer of silver oxide coating, but I couldn't find a lot of information to support that, so I'm not sure. But those are very small volume and you need mountains of the stuff and great big vats of acid to recover any real quantity. They aren't economical. What you'll want to find are silver contacts. The little buttons that sit as points of contact in places where electrical currents are switched on and off. These are in electrical relays, like the kinds on a circuit board or in a car, electrical switches of all kinds, and in breaker boxes. These are just a few examples. Let's crack open a breaker switch. This one doesn't seem to be very good. Kind of seems like this button will be the best piece, but this could be silver plated, as could that. Well, that big one seemed to have slightly better yield. These these uh, copper wires here look like they could be silver plated. They've got little silver buttons there, but the color of these makes me want to test those as well. And then the points where the wire attaches all along there and this piece here. I think it's worth testing, not to mention these bits. You can bet some manufacturers would be cheaping out and using straight copper if they could, but silver is required because of its high resistance to arc corrosion and material transfer. Straight copper would weld together at the point where the arc happened. This is also why these contacts are basically never pure silver, but more often 60% tungsten or 10% cadmium. I found a great resource that details the many different alloys that are used in these silver contacts, so I'll link it in the description box for anybody who wants to dive right in. There are other places you'll see silver from time to time, so how will we know when we see it? Now, silver is one of those things you can train yourself to identify once you get used to it. You'll start to know where to look for it, but the, the tarnish has a really unique appearance. This oxide layer is more colorful than the kind you'd see in aluminum or zinc, and it's, uh, it's blue, pink, smoky, almost iridescent sheen is unlikely to be anything but silver. To actually test it though, you can get a silver acid test kit like this one. The acid isn't expensive, but it's good to have a testing stone as well, because the acid is basically a weak aqua regia, and uh, if you were to use it on something like sandpaper, it would eat straight through it. Let's give it a try on these pieces. All right, we'll try both the place where I rubbed it and the rubbings. That's funny, it doesn't seem to be eating it away at all or changing color. It should turn bright beet red if there is silver. There we are. 
That's the red color we wanted. Let's have a few other tests. This one just turned black. That's not silver. Black, blue, probably a lot of copper. This one I'm confused about. Like it hasn't changed at all. But these do seem pretty special, so... This one, just sort of gray. No silver there. Then this... We've got black, no effect, and a little bit gray. So, those have no silver on them. And then this one, also bright blue. And then this one I'm really curious about. These were big heavy chunks on the end of a battery terminal. Yeah, those went red real quick. So that is definitely silver, but not solid. That'll be silver plated. Well, that was fun. Turns out I have a lot less silver than I thought. But I'm kind of excited because of those other mystery bits. They didn't react at all, meaning they are probably still some sort of precious metal. But silver is the cheap one, so that's kind of cool. There's another method that we can try to test it, apparently, and that's by adding a bit of bleach. Let's try it. Well, it seems like the bleach has taught us absolutely nothing. This stuff costs five bucks, and it seems like it'll last a really long time. You should just get some. So, we have a small handful of mixed silver buttons. What are we gonna do with them? Okay, so from a jar of silver contacts, we'd like to end up with a nugget or bar of pure silver. We wanna refine it. What's the best way? Let me just say that this is a complicated subject that needs to be studied before it's practiced. Failure to respect the procedures involved could result in wasting a whole bunch of expensive materials at best, or serious and permanent harm to yourself and the environment at worst. I've been researching it for a little while now and there is still so much for me to learn before playing with dangerous chemicals. That said, I do think we can play with some today. So, from what I found, there are two main ways we can separate the copper from the silver button here. The first one would be to take a torch and heat it up until the solder is melty and then flick it off with a screwdriver or whatever. That would actually be a bad move because only some of them are soldered and the ones that are are usually the ones that contain cadmium. And cadmium fumes are super not great. The other method is to use hydrochloric acid to etch the copper until it's completely removed. What's important to understand here is that hydrochloric acid can etch or oxidize most metals, including silver and gold, but it can't start that process without a catalyst to begin the oxidization. When dissolving precious metals to drop them out later in a purified form, that catalyst is nitric acid, and that solution is called aqua regia. You could also use a nitrate salt as the catalyst for a weaker but cheaper version. If we want to selectively dissolve base metals like tin and copper, we need a weaker oxidization catalyst, like hydrogen peroxide 3%, and this solution is called acid peroxide, or AP, and that's the one I'd like to try. So, we'll want to remove as much of the copper and brass as possible to reduce the amount of work our AP needs to do. Apparently oils will contaminate the brew, so we'll do a bit of cleaning. Then, wearing PPE, We'll mix two parts hydrochloric acid, 30%, with one part hydrogen peroxide, 3%. Then add our bits and basically just be patient and let them sit, stirring occasionally. This could take about a week. You can accelerate it by adding more hydrogen peroxide or heating it, but this will dissolve some of your precious metals as well, so it's best not to. The AP method is very slow compared to aqua regia, but it does have a few advantages. The obvious one being we can sort of avoid dissolving silver, gold, and platinum. Another being it doesn't require nitric acid, which is expensive, difficult to acquire, and seriously dangerous stuff to have around. Now, the less obvious advantages are firstly the fumes. With the AP reaction, you're just producing hydrogen chloride gas, and that's only in the initial stages when you're producing copper chloride, which is what's actually going to dissolve the copper, not the peroxide. Now that gas is poisonous and will corrode nearby metals, but the fumes from aqua regia are chlorine gas, like the stuff in World War I, and nitrogen dioxide, which combines with the water in your lungs to form nitric acid and rapidly dissolve soft tissues. Terrifying. And the final advantage of AP, and it's a big one, is it can be reused. Aqua regia cannot be refreshed, you have to throw it out once it's spent. 
AP, you can just top off the hydrochloric acid if it stops dissolving copper, or you can add a piece of stainless steel into it and the copper chloride will cement out onto the stainless as pure copper and you can just remove it. Shout out to Scrap Daddy Moose Scrapper who made the first videos I saw showing these methods. Now I'm just gonna have to let that do its thing for days, weeks, I don't know, however long it takes. It's a small batch though. Now that's gonna take a little more time. A few other points about AP. It will get loaded up with zinc from the brass and tin from the solder and whatever else from using it in this way. I don't know how those contaminants will affect it and I don't really know how long it can be used before it needs to be disposed of. It cannot go down the drain. It needs to go to a hazardous waste disposal and that may not be free. It depends where you are. It will also have small amounts of precious metals in it that you can recover. But like many things, we don't have enough time to cover that right here. So, theoretically, we now have a small pile of silver buttons, and maybe some other bits. But remember how these are not pure? They've got cadmium and tungsten and whatever else? The tungsten ones would be basically impossible to melt at home. In order to reclaim the pure silver, we'd need to dissolve them in aqua regia and precipitate it out. And that's not going to happen without a fume hood. Anybody who tells you they've melted these down into pure silver nuggets is just incorrect. When it comes down to it, collecting silver like this is not profitable. It's time consuming and somewhat dangerous. But as a hobby, it is neat to build up a small pile of them and they are much larger than gold foils. There is a much more effective method to collecting silver from scrap metal and I'd be happy to share this method if you're interested. This is a Canadian silver maple leaf, a one ounce coin of four nines fine pure silver, considered by many to be the best silver in the world. You would have no trouble selling or trading this, theoretically, ever. It cost me about two hours of my time, ten dollars in gas, and nothing I used to acquire it left me with a pile of poisonous, acid-soaked, stinky equipment to deal with somehow. If you want to have silver, this is the way, because you can't get your time and health back. Thank you for sharing this time with me. Thank you for sharing this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe and like if you'd like more like them, and I'll see you in the comments section. Leave it better than you found it. Keep doing the thing.